Welcome to In Retrospection, the show where we review the retro today. I am Joshua Caleb, joined today by both Graham Ellis and Dustin Schmidt. Hey guys. How's it going, fellas? Pretty good. Yeah, finally got some new internet, so hopefully this should go smoother than normal. That looks pretty smooth on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know if you guys caught anything from that intro, but apparently stars live underwater. Cool. And we're some hero's son or something. <laughs> yeah, the vague intro. <laughs> yeah, That's so this, the plot. <laughs> yeah, so so this is Ristar for the Sega Genesis. Um kind of a unknown, quirky, but kind of fun platformer. It act. I, I was doing some research on it, and it actually um, originally started out as uh, some kind of prototype character for Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, well, I was gonna say it's very hedgehoggy looking. Like, uh, the level map design and the color palette, right? Yeah, when they were when they were trying to come up with the Sonic the Hedgehog design, they they came up with some kind of little um, rabbit with long ears that would grab stuff and somewhere along the lines they decided they wanted to go with the hedgehog because they wanted it to roll up and stuff and they saw that hedgehogs rolled up in balls and so they eventually went and scrapped this and went with that which I don't remember how long how much later it was but they eventually went back to went back to this and somehow went from a um, rabbit with long ears to a star with long arms. <laughs> He's got quite, quite the reach. Yeah, then that's sort of, sort of the unique part of the gameplay is it's all based around his massive, massively long stretchable arms. So he runs around, the star runs around collecting other stars. Yeah, something like that. The, the stars are your health. And you, I don't know, you collect gems for points or something. I don't know, it's probably I'll explain in a manual somewhere. Oh yeah, there's these, these star handle things. Oh, interesting way of um dis dispatching of enemies is to grab them and smash them into your face. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering what was going on there. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's pretty much his face is his weapon. He goes, oh, that was dumb. He just grabs an enemy and either slams the enemy into his face or smashes his face into the enemy. Well, that was easy. That was different. <laughs> some, of, some of the enemies remind me of the beans from Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Yeah, they probably were repurposed. Yeah, I think this is the end of the level thingy. You get, you get like bonus points or something for how high you can exit the level. <laughs> cool. Eight bonus, eight thousand points. Dark Woods. It has a very sonic feel to it. Yeah, very. The 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 soundtrack is. Definitely that same sort of s style. I don't know if that's like J pop or what that is. Cool. And I'm, well, didn't uh, Michael Jackson like do the music for Sonic 3 or something? 
Really? I thought they I thought they had some big um, um artist do the music for Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Ooh, the gem. It's weird when they go in the front foreground and background. So I'm assuming I'm the only person who's played this game. Yes. <laughs> well, I, at least I have. Yeah, I never owned a Genesis. Um, it was something I played <laughs> when I worked. <laughs> <laughs> when you used to sell these things at the Kmart, for example. But... Um, but, uh, it, uh, it was always a fun little system. Of course, Sonic was, like, the Sega game. Yeah, I see, I, I had all the Sonic games. I never actually had this one. I only played this when I got a GameCube and got the, um, Sonic Mega Collection. This was one of the games they just, they threw in there. Well, that's one nice thing that uh, Sega has done is they've, uh, you know, they don't lock, uh, well, I guess they don't make consoles anymore, so they're not locked to produce Sega games just for their own consoles. Uh-huh. So the way they put them on the Xbox, on the PS4, whatever. Yeah, because you, you can get this now on the Virtual Console on the Wii, as well as on Steam. Oh, that's interesting. Got dark. I like how he can use his arms and like climb completely vertical walls. Just by smashing his face against the, against the wall higher and higher. I think I found your claim here. Oh, about Sonic 3? Yeah, he said that Jackson was actually involved in some of Sonic 3's compositions. It's supposedly not being credited because he wasn't happy how they sounded. Oh. Uh, supposedly the Hedgehog 3 theme end music became the basis for his single Stranger in Moscow. Okay. <laughs> That's all cool according to uh, his composer, Brad Buxer. Well, I suppose he would know. Well, I think the, the music in Sonic 3 is pretty good. I don't suppose... Well, there's a, there's a lot of... Uh, you know, it's considered pretty dubious that it, it is or isn't, because there's no official... You know, from the family itself, so... Oh, uh, yeah. You know, you have to take that for granted. Yeah, and I suppose, um... Video game... Music didn't have quite the respect that it does now. Can't tell if those are supposed to be voice clips or what. Sounds like, sounds oh, like he's supposed to be one. saying something. Wow, that was really loud. <laughs> Surprised there aren't any like shooter levels in this game, considering we're traveling through space. I mean, Magic School Bus on the Genesis had a shooter level. Funny. <laughs> I know that was really crazy. That's educational. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're flying through the asteroid belt, shooting asteroids. So that's educational. <laughs> Ooh, now we have an underwater level. 
Yeah, so why are why do stars go underwater? This is totally cool off, just like everybody else. This is totally Sonic the Hedgehog 3 Hydro City. Just more colorful. Sonic is darker the deeper you go. I'm kind of digging the music though. Ah. Oh, it's hard to see in the dark. I need that little angler fish from um, Donkey Kong Country 2. Stay up here. Ah, I have to go down. I mean, it's almost got that Donkey Kong underwater music. Yeah. I'm not sure if it would, if that, because each of the Donkey Kong countries had a very distinct underwater theme. Um. Two was more piratey, I guess. Yes, so this would have to be either one or three. Oh, is that a treasure chest? Ah, more star. I have to say, I like these games that, um, these old games where they gave the characters health bars instead of the Mario thing, the one-hit wonder. Yeah. That always annoys they are me. Fun. Oh, interesting way See, look at that, I can climb a wall. He's in that's, like, that's like, um, Mega Man X with his slide, with his wall kick. You can just go straight up vertical walls. Good, they're giving lots of stars. Ah. Let's see if I can get up. Ah, it's, it's that last that last bit that you it's, you can't quite make it the jump. Ooh, those look spiky. Ah, where did he come from? This is a pretty neat level. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot in it. Ooh, what's going on now? Oh boy. Got a wave. Oh. Hey, I grabbed him. Okay, where'd they put the checkpoint? Uh, that's not terrible. Hey. Oh. Blue star, okay, the blue star is full health. Okay, so what am I supposed to be watching for here? They're throwing rocks. And then they come down. And then I grab them. Very creative mini bosses. Beaching my angel fish. <laughs> Ooh, now we got those electro thingies. <clears throat> Is that it? Okay. Oh, 
Ooh, kind of a unique way to finish a level. Yeah, I really like it. I have to say, this actually probably controls easier than um, Kirby did. Really? Okay. Surprisingly. The, the arm thing takes some getting used to, but actually... See, he, he's not nearly as floaty as Kirby was. Ker Kirby was very floaty. <laughs> no, he was like a balloon. This totally sounds like something out of Donkey Kong Country now. Am I supposed to go up here? Huh. Ooh. Like, um, the labyrinth zone on the first Sonic the Hedgehog, you have to find the switches to open up the doors. Okay. Which, where is the switch for this one, or do I have to destroy that seahorse dude? Oh, yep. Yeah, this music sounds straight out of Donkey Kong Country 3. Bar just comes down and donk, donks him on the head. <laughs> Killed by his own health bar. Hey. That sounds so rude. <laughs> <laughs> This is this is straight out of Sonic Sonic 3 now. You gotta grab onto something for the tidal wave. The current doesn't take you away. Oh. Yeah. This is heavily inspired by Sonic. <laughs> oh, is that what's doing the thing? Ah! No! 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 Ah! see the paper where it's when it slows down <laughs> yeah there you go oh ah there It. He slipped through your fingers. <laughs> oh, literally. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Uh, oh. There we go. Take that right away. And then, oh, that was nice. I have to say, I've never been a big fan of these um, locked room sections in games. Uh, yeah, well, you get those in everything from Lara Croft to anything else, really. I know, I know they're very prevalent in a lot of um, action beat em up games. Like the, those old um, side scroller beat em ups. Uh -huh. They had the equivalent of a lock room. Exactly. Ah. They just keep throwing stuff at me. And I missed one. I'm not doing too bad for having hardly ever played this. Well, it helps to know how to play a platformer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but platformers are one of my favorite um, genres. Even though I'm not very good at, um, oh, something like N+. Plus. Have you ever played the N or N plus game? No, I can't say I have. I think it started as like a Flash game or something, and then they ported it to the various consoles. It's basically... How does that game work? What kind of game is it? It is pure, unadulterated platforming. Okay. You play as a little stick man, or a ninja. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think and, I know the one you mean. Yeah, and you can jump, and you can wall... You can run, jump, and wall, wall jump. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few variations out of that. Explosion Man is sort of a, a, a variation of that. Kind of, yeah. Except you can blow yourself up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of cool for, uh, you know, take on the same thing. Because really, to me, all platformers are not necessarily Donkey Kong, which is really what they are. <laughs> but they're Load Runner. Because Load Runner was the big flat multi a console game uh -huh. machine platformer for uh, for my generation at least come on and i'm surprised it really hasn't made a comeback in some of the uh, larger systems you know like a uh, tablets and so forth load runner yeah that is weird because they released the, that remake on the Xbox Live. Now that that's pretty fun. Yeah, but they didn't really release it for anything else, you know? Like... No. Well, that's World 2 down. <laughs> this seems shorter than a normal platformer. I guess it depends on how many, how many stages there are. Kasonic only has like two or three stages per world. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking Donkey Kong Country where you have like six stages to a world or something. But aren't there only like six worlds in this? So. Ooh. Just about every level on this is like inspired by Sonic 3. What the heck? Oh. Oh, I get it. 
puzzles. <laughs> Fan himself. Is that noise? Oh, I'm supposed to blow the cage up. No. So this originally oh. came out in 1995. So that was pretty late in the Genesis life cycle, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And imagine you were saying that they had the game probably partially developed. And yeah, a, a lot of the... Probably, sorry. A, a lot of the concepts were... Yeah, they probably put it out just to get it out, like, to have a game out. Yeah. Because, I mean, let's face it, it's... It's a neat take on side, but... Yeah, it's, like, it's yeah. like a completely repurposed Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. So I have to say, he doesn't have quite as much attitude as um, Sonic does. Oh, 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 no. Fire, fire bad. Oh. Hey. Oh, oh, um. Oh, there's a... <laughs> Think fast. They did make a Game Gear version, apparently, of this. Oh, yeah, that's right. We'll see ev almost everything on the Genesis. They made a Game Gear version of it. Yeah. I don't think I ever played that. That'd be sort of interesting. I played around with with the Game Gear, but at the time they were quite expensive. And yeah. The batteries were just like it was a battery here. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I got one used because the Game Boy Colors were, at least at that point, the Game Boy Colors were too expensive. So I got a Game Gear. <laughs> that thing used to just eat through batteries. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you had to carry about four sets of double A's with you. Well, oh, back, back then, the uh, backlights weren't LEDs. Right? They were actually coal cathode fluorescent lighting in them. <laughs> and it did suck batteries. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, the, the Game Gear actually had a backlight. With the Game Boy Color and Game Boy, you know, they had no backlight. You had to get those yeah. little worm light things. And those didn't always work very well. Yeah, I, we had a clip-on light for one of them here. Really disappointed in the screen on the Advance Game Boy Advance. Oh, having no backlight. Yeah, because it was dark screen to start with. Yeah, that was a fun system though. True. Ah, no, let go of me, let go of me. Ah. Hey, 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 hey. Ah, trying to aim his arms is probably the hardest part of this game. I wonder if it'd be I wonder if they redesigned this with like dual stick support or something. Where you can control his arms with one stick. Yeah, you always wonder how sometimes they pick the control. I mean, sometimes it was limited to the controller that you had, right? Uh-huh. But uh, you often wonder if they could repurpose some of the games with a better controller. Yeah, definitely, because some of them are not easy to control. Mm-hmm. I think some games would be better with a little different control, like uh, using the dual analog sticks on some other controllers that today they have, rather than the single stick or the D-pad that they used to. Uh-huh. 
like um Goldeneye or some of those early shooters and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Not not having the dual stick. Oh! Oh, fire! Ooh, everything got dark. Oh, bonus area. Huh. That's, a, that's like, um... On Sonic Rush for the DS. They actually use... They actually have the bonus rounds like this where you have to get grab some kind of handle like that and spin it around really fast to get to the bonus round. Up a little short there. Yeah, so those arms. Yeah. Try, trying to aim those arms of his <laughs> while moving. Just a little longer. And the problem with some of those bonus rounds is often you don't get a, get into them enough to actually practice at them. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> they they give them to you for about thirty seconds, and that's just enough time to figure out what the heck you're supposed to be doing. I'm assuming the ground is hot. <laughs> Which was why they were making me swing across the floor. The mechanics are kind of fun though. When, when you get when you get into it, moving with with his arms. What? What? Hey, what? Oh wait, is this? Is this like a... Oh, is that like a memory game? Not sure. <laughs> he kept saying, hey, and then it went one, two, three, four. to do. I had to break them in that order, yeah. Okay, so I got a gem. Wait, what? Oh, so now they don't give you the numbers. <laughs> Ooh, I got a star, so that was good. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh boy. Um that... was the middle. Oh Yeah, it was the wow. middle. The lower middle that is. Yeah, so that was uh was Simon. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Well I don't know how long we've gone for here, but that was probably a pretty good look at Ristar. I'd say. Yeah, really cool, interesting game. Yeah. According to uh, the wiki on it, uh, it was uh, one of the reasons it wasn't very successful is it came out a few months, only three months before the Sega Saturn was released. Oh. But then so it got but, probably overshadowed in the release yeah. of the Saturn. But the Saturn tanked. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it tanked because it, it was expensive. Well, and there were no, no, there were no games for it. And there wasn't a whole lot of games for it except for Panzer Dragoon. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't, they didn't even get a whole. S <laughs> the, they didn't even get a Sonic game for it, so they had to repurpose Sonic 3D Blast to work on it. Yeah. And then. It was yeah. It was interesting because uh, it helped the other companies kind of figure out what they really needed to do based on the failures of the Sega. <laughs> yeah. You had to have. Uh, an uber game like a killer app type game yep right on the release you had to have x number of games you know 
And uh, if you look at every console that succeeded after that, that's basically what they had, right? Yeah, though, except the GameCube. The GameCube had Luigi's Mansion. Uh, true, but the GameCube was also backwards compatible to some degree with... Uh, is it backwards compatible with one of the three systems? No, the GameCube... Oh no, sorry, it was the X1 that was backwards compatible. Yeah, none of N Nintendo has never been very good about backwards compatibility except with their portable systems. Yeah. The new one is the new Wii is not backwards compatible with the GameCube. Nope, they ditched that, and you never know it. Like the only difference is the the letter the word Wii is like a, is horizontal rather than vertical or something like that. It's both. <laughs> yeah, and and that and that makes it incompatible with GameCube. <laughs> Yeah. Well, anyway, um, if you want to find some more retro reviews, you can check that out on my blog, Retro Games Forever, or I'm writing more stuff for Retroist at Retroist.com. And, of course, follow me on Twitter at JoshuaCaleb75. And uh, how about you guys? What are you, what are you guys up to these days? Go ahead, Dustin. Okay. I wasn't sure. Oh, no, nothing. Just moved halfway across the country, but you can you can still find me on Twitter. Same handle as before, Schmidt DA. Yeah, and I'm on Twitter at uh, smokeme underscore a kipper. Uh, uh, Red Dwarf fans will know what that means. A new, new season of Red Dwarf is coming. <laughs> so I'll put my plug in for that. <laughs> when but, is that coming? Uh, uh, they're filming it now, so it'll be out okay. probably in the spring of this year, or next year, I mean. It's, uh, season 10, so it's Red Dwarf X. Ooh. <laughs> Got a cool name like that. Yeah, I love that show. <laughs> but uh, anyways, whether I play in them, but uh, hopefully uh, you uh, you guys can uh, look, go back and go through some of the stuff that we did before. Uh, Joshua's blog. Yep, I'm working on posting more of it to YouTube now. You can find that at my YouTube channel, which is like, I think that's Joshua Caleb 25 as well. And you can find this neat little game on the Virtual Console and on Steam. So, yeah, that's nice as well as in various Sega Genesis collections for all the various consoles. So that will do it for the, us this week, and we will see you next week in the past.